Hi, I'm Gretchen and today we're going to decoupage some trees, some wooden trees for holiday decor. Um, if you followed any of my other videos, I did one on shells and then pumpkins. And once I got into doing the pumpkins and selling them, I really started to search for something Christmas um, that would translate. And I couldn't find the right thing online, but I finally at Home Goods came across all the wooden trees. And I posted a picture of that in the beginning of this, but these is, this is what they look like. This is the darkest stain, so the most um, difficult to work with. And actually, this is a pretty stain. Some of them weren't as attractive. So my wonderful husband got to work um, priming them all for me so that they had a great backdrop for my decoupage. And today I'm gonna show you how to decoupage them. Um, one of the things that is fun, but a little crazy about the ones that I found is I really liked that they were all different shapes and sizes. But I will say that each tree and its shape and each napkin creates a different, um, kind of challenge. So, I mean, I, I even pushed myself to do a plaid one, which, or a tartan, which I love. Um, it shows a little bit more, you can see a little bit of dark where there's overlap, but overall I think it's super cute. Um, I've done the blue and white because those are so fun and such a great way to add something non-traditional to the decor. And then I've done even some more traditional looks. Um, this is a Kaspari napkin that I love that has these apples and grapes and pears on it and ribbons and that has a much more traditional look and then one of my favorites is this awesome nutcracker again all Kaspari napkins um not that they endorse me they should but um but everything from super fun and just kind of completely different this this whole grouping that I did has kind of a like a um it reminds me of like a candy land or a um, a frosty forest kind of feel and that's different than say some of these more traditional ones but anyway um, that's just to give you an idea that this is just one look that you can achieve and obviously if you decoupage it all you know that um, one thing I've learned this is only my third video is that uh, my camera angles weren't always the best on my last and for some people that's fine but for visual learners I think it's a lot easier so I have this new contraption we're gonna see how that works um, the funny part is I feel funny starting with that because it when my daughter was little, it was always really important to me when people were um, being introduced to her, talking to her, that she make eye contact. And so I find that not doing that feels really odd to me. So I am now gonna switch the angle so that you can see what I'm working with. Um, I have a picture of all the materials. I personally have been using um, DuraClear. On these, I'm using gloss and high gloss, which I'll get to in a minute. Um, but you just need your paintbrush, your DuraClear, whatever item it is. Um, for priming, just a, a back to backtrack to that, you can use chalk paint or gesso. Um, my husband used chalk paint, but that was just because that's what I had. Um, and then you're just gonna need napkins. And like I said, that, that's the fun part because that's where you can really add your own personality or look that you want or match it to decor that you wanna match it to. So here we go. So on these, um, you've heard me talk before about tearing versus cutting. I am gonna tear on some of these because this, um, the amount of space that's showing with the picture is, or the pattern is, is smaller. Um, so I think it works. Where I don't like tearing is when several of the, it, when it's smaller pieces and they overlap, that's when I feel like it gets um, a little tattered looking and bumpy. And that's when I can get it to just disappear and I can meet them up without too much overlap of the fray. That's when I think it looks nice. On this one, I'm actually gonna cut this exterior off. I'm gonna do that because I'm actually gonna line the very bottom of it with that, but I've already done that. So what I have started with is a couple that I have torn that I'm gonna use to start this. Um, I have been trying on these. One thing that's interesting of a, like a tree versus a pumpkin is the amount of area, surface area that you can see at one time is, um, there's less of it, but the negative is, is that your eye really goes there. So I always try and start with a part of the scene. I'm sorry, I didn't even say, today I'm gonna to be using this blue and white napkin, um, which you could see probably if the picture's in the beginning. But so the most important thing for me here is I wanna get this little scene here to fit. And I've already kind of torn this because I'm gonna put it on this second tier because the first one it doesn't, it kind of warps that bird, which I don't love. I'm gonna do flowers on that one. Um, 
often people will say you should put the um, Mod Podge or whatever um, shellac you're gonna use all over the whole thing. I do not do that because I feel like it doesn't give me as much flexibility. It makes more of a mess and it doesn't give me the flexibility to kind of move these around to see how I want them to go on. Um, I have shared before that I empty my DuraClear into a little jar, mason jar, the word was escaping me. Um, it just makes it easier to use. And recently I got a new brush and I kind of avoided getting a nicer brush because I'm not always the best at cleaning it right after, but I have to tell you, I love this. It's much softer. Um, it doesn't tear the napkin as much, so I'm really happy with it. Just just in case you kind of are using like sponges or and wondering if uh, a brush makes a difference. For me, it really has. So I'm gonna start by just doing a really light coat. You can see it. Now, when I'm doing this, if there's any area where there's gonna be stain that comes through, it's gonna show up as soon as I put this on. So always pay attention when you're doing this to make sure there's not like a dark patch that was missed or that's gonna come through. Okay, so I've got my nice little coating. And now I'm gonna take my napkin and I'm gonna be really particular about this spot first. This spot's gonna go down first because that is where my bird is and that's where I want it to be visible. So then I'm gonna take my saran wrap and I just use that, I probably could do this with my fingers but I like it because it just makes sure that it's not gonna stick. And I'm gonna rub it from that part in and if I start to get any little wrinkles, I just kind of pick it up and start over. My takeaway always from this is it's impossible to get no wrinkles, no um, creases. So I'm trying to make sure that if I do, I concentrate them outside of the primary image. So when you're looking at it, right, you're gonna look right at these birds, you're gonna pay attention to that and you're not gonna pay as much attention to what's going on underneath the ledges. That being said, okay, so I'm gonna stop here because now I'm starting to pull that. So see how nicely that goes down? And then one of the things is I always make sure when I'm putting my varnish up in the top, you have to be careful because it can get gloopy, but you really wanna get it into that hard edge. And I'll tell you why, I think on these things, Nothing is more telling than not being able to see the actual shape of the tree. So you really want that tree shape, and I've got some little tiny graphic there that I really don't wanna to have to mess with later, so I'm gonna take that off. Um, I don't mind the napkin, but I don't really want like an edge of a random graphic. So I'm just gonna go in, and now I'm gonna take this part, finish it off, And I really think this is kind of a, an art, figuring out how much goes on that's not so much that you're gonna rip it or have, you know, kind of mush, but enough that we know that that's really going down. Okay, so I'm pushing out from the center, going all the way through, and then I'm gonna just now, here's where like I, I had to kind of force it which again, you're gonna see wrinkles, but they're up under this ledge primarily. Then I'm just gonna continue with this flower. Okay, now, most people will say, okay, now they do the top layer. I do not do that yet. So I keep this under layer dry on the top until I have done the whole thing. I sometimes, We'll go in and do the edges. So you can see my wrinkles there, but see how nicely like that just, if I go over it with this and they go down and I don't mind that at all. I think that, you know, these, because they're wood and the way they feel, they end up having kind of a um, an antique wood painted feel anyway. Um, so it doesn't really bother me if there's a little bit of wrinkling, but if you can see that, which I think you can, hey, good job, camera angle. Um, 
So now it'll be something different in my comments that didn't work, <laughs> but just bear with me. I'm again, not a professional. So I am going to then show you that. Then easy enough, you can come in after that one spot and you can see where I've torn this. And again, these, when you tear, one thing that's important is the one thing I like about cutting is cutting gives you um, a lot more control. Tearing, I, I actually will hold it pretty tight with two fingers when I tear as opposed to kind of ripping. And the reason I do that is because it's the only thing that gives me a little bit of control over kind of where I'm going. When I first started doing it, I would rip it right in the middle of the image. So I'm then gonna go down to this and now I'm laughing because I can't remember. Okay, there it is. So as you see, this was a piece. And the reason I tore this off earlier is because it was just too big and I knew I was gonna get too many creases and wrinkles. But I'll do this other piece, come in here, and I'll do a little bit over the other edge of the thing, but like I said, I try and keep it as clean as I can. And then I'm gonna go in and make sure I have this, that's weird. So sometimes it's hard because the angle's a little funny and you do overlap. All right, but look, see how nice that is? You can't even tell. I love that. That makes me really happy. Um, and when you go in here, and there's a, it's a little bit off, but again, nobody's going to notice. And as a, a somewhat of a perfectionist, I notice the errors in this way more than anybody else does. But as you can see, that's pretty continuous. Um, and I've said this before in videos, but it's I always talk about kind of using soft eyes, right? Like people aren't inspecting it the way I will inspect it. So soften your eyes, look at it and see if, if there's any place where your eye's gonna stop. Now I'm gonna do this underneath and I am gonna cut. And I usually try and cut where there's not an image because this is gonna cause a little bit of overlap, right? So I'm gonna cut some little wedges out and that'll give me the ability, I've got this one already over here so I can kind of pull this to that side. Um, but I'm gonna pull it down. And then again, I just actually flip it up like that um, when I get underneath and I don't wanna goop it on the edge or it's gonna tear it. And then I'll do down just a little bit. I don't think it's gonna wrap very far down. Okay. So now we have that. So I'm gonna take it, flip it, and then I'm gonna use my brush and I'm just gonna tuck it back. And again, I want it to go all the way in and I can check under my edge and then I just am gonna fold this under. Oops, okay, there it goes. I'm actually gonna hold this one up for now. I'm gonna fold that under so that that little piece now, do you see that little tiny blue line? It's probably hard to see, but there's a little tiny edge of pigment. I'm gonna take my thumbnail, really technical, and scrape that off because I don't want that to show up. Then when I overlay a flower on there later, you won't see that there's another image that was taken off. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you underneath. See how that is? And now I'm gonna take, I don't really like, that is a little bit more, there we go. So it's tucked. Then I'm gonna take this piece and I am gonna take a tiny bit of that edge off. It's frayed, it doesn't have any pattern, but it's gonna cause a little bit of gunkiness later. So then I tuck this under. And I kind of pulled it over a little bit because there's that gap. One of the things I do at the very end is I go around and I look for any teeny tiny gaps and I can see one right there. I don't know if that's visible or not. And that's just because that's gonna be the paint. And as funny as it is, like this is just a little bit of a different color and I feel like it just shows the background a little. So I always want that background to be all solid. And then this one, I'm gonna put more on as I drip it all over my table is already covered okay so that one then I'm gonna just tuck and again this is where all my 
little imperfections are hopefully going to end up for the most part. But if you're looking at that, it looks perfectly together. You can't really see. Um, and if people are looking up underneath it, then that's another problem. Now, this is a different story up here. I didn't do this yet. So I am going to, I've got that corner brush. I'll get that later. This part all the way up, and I want my edges to be sharp. I don't want there to be any overhang of napkin because I really want you to be able to see the full shape of the tree. I'm hoping that, I can't see this video, so I can, I'm hoping that it's showing you the right spot. All right, so I'm gonna continue this. You don't need to watch me do the whole process, but now you can kind of get a feel for what that's like. Um, just a side note, I will then take this napkin, see I've got this space in the back, and I will kind of, because I haven't covered it, I have the ability to kind of go in and say, okay, this particular full flower image will fit. So I'm just gonna tear this along the edges of that outside. And I'm gonna put that inside that middle space. Um, Oh, and by the way, I got this new little tray. It's a turntable. It's an art turntable. I was using a um, little Christmas or um, baking table because I love to bake a cake decorating table, but it was a little wonkier and it was up higher, which I didn't like. Um, I've got some, a little bit of varnish on my thing. I'll get now. Um, but anyway, there you go. I just wanted to really quickly show you when I'm piecing in the other ones, I will kind of just play around with it. And that's all I just wanted to encourage you to do is check putting it in different ways, overlapping a little's great, maybe too much. And if this seems like it's too hard to get this whole thing to fit, I'll just tear it in two. And then maybe I can piece it in with a little bit more ease and then figure out where I want it to go. Okay, two quick little tips. One, um, I have a spot right in here where I had too much varnish on and it has torn a little bit. Leave that spot. That would be my recommendation. I used to try and mess with it right away and I found that I actually caused more problems. If I wait and let that spot dry at least a little, then I can go in and tack in a piece of paper pretty easily. But if I start messing with it now, I run the risk of making it worse. Um, also, just a, a little tip too, to kind of when you're, I this was the first piece I put on. So now that I'm working on my second piece, I went kind of to the opposite side to work with the birds again. Um, and this one I put way high and so his head's kind of cut off and that wasn't intentional, but it is what it is. Um, but it's on this opposite side, which makes it interesting from all sides. And another place I use scissors is if you look, this right here is gonna overlap and that's really light. So it's gonna add kind of a layer of that to take the light, the darkness of that blue out, for lack of a better term. It's gonna add just a kind of a, a cover, if you will. And I think that's kind of one of the dead giveaways of decoupage when you've got all those different layers. So what I want is for this to end up looking like it's somewhat hand painted. So I don't mind it so much if there's an, a print to it, but like here, that one's gonna end up going over there and making that one section more muted. And so I'm just gonna cut it. And then when I brush it down, it's pretty even. I thought I'd show you the top. It's really not that different, but just to kind of give you a feel. Um, I'm gonna put a little bit on the top, making sure that I have a really nice layer. And then I kind of am fiddling around. This side has a lot of the darker flowers, so I thought I'd put this lighter flower up here. But what I'm gonna do is take it and I want uh, this to go over the top. Okay, so my first piece I'm gonna take over the tip. You can see it actually just right there. Um, because I want to make sure that that is smooth. I don't want any different pieces kind of butting up against each other up there because I feel like it just will draw attention um, 
to the homemade nature of it. And that sounds funny, but that's kind of my ultimate goal always is I want to craft something that looks nice enough that it can stand up to the other things in my house without looking like it's quote unquote homemade. Um, so I think it's those little tiny details of kind of keeping it clean and being meticulous that makes a difference. Um, and I didn't mention it before, but some of that does come down to like even on the on the birds and on the you know, making sure they're centered. Of course, it should matter that I cut his head off, but that's, that's fun. Um, because if it's off kilter again, those are all things that are kind of dead giveaways. But there you go. I'm going to go ahead and continue to wrap this. And as you'll see, this one piece actually almost covers the whole top. Okay, another quick tip. When I have a little spot, like right here, that is just paint, if I tear out, which I did a tiny piece of napkin, I actually will use my wet brush to pick it up and then I can place it right where I want it to go and work with it without having to try and touch it. And I find that that's just a really easy way. I mean, I drop more little tiny napkin pieces, but see how that just like fills that space in. You kind of can't tell loosely if you're looking at it that that isn't supposed to be there. Um, and it works wonders. The other thing that I didn't mention earlier that I do is it's kind of, I've, we've talked about tearing and cutting and everybody has different philosophies. But the other thing I've been doing a lot of is kind of an in-between where I kind of will pull with my scissors. So it'll have some fray, but not kind of the same degree that like all this junk over here um, that looks a hot mess. So there you go. I, I don't even know what I would call that, but I just use it to get some of that excess. But then if I still want a little bit of a kind of a frayed edge, hoping that that'll just melt like butter onto the piece when I patch it in. And this napkin is great because it has these really light pigment um, flowers that I can add in and they're so light that they're they're really easy to kind of hide and they disappear into the rest. Um, okay, so I have most of the surface covered. I do have some underneath areas that I really want to finish off and clean up, but I'm going to wait until the rest of this dries a little bit more. So my last step before I kind of do that is I'm going to go around and look for all these little pieces that are not adhered to the piece. So this one I missed is a huge one. And those are just gonna be the telltale signs. What you don't want is something like that that then gets lightly glazed and they get kind of hard and crinkly and it sounds like, you know, crackling paper when you touch it or pick it up. And um, again, it's fine. It's not that big of a deal, but it doesn't exactly make it feel very well finished. And this down here is just really gunky. I'll, um, after all this dries a little bit, I will show you how I piece together the bottom pieces. It's not rocket science, but um, just how I flip it to easily work with. So I've done the top side. Now I'm gonna do the underside and I just have this old bucket that I used to be in my daughter's playroom. Um, I'm kind of the queen of repurposing things. And I flip it upside down. Obviously the reason I wanted it to dry is I don't wanna do that if, for example, the top of it's wet and the um, napkins might tear. But I just kind of found a flower I, I am kind of looking at sizing that's a little bit bigger than I want. So I will trim it up, put my little coat on. But this way, I, I really want it, again, I'm like a broken record, but I want this to look really finished and nice. And when I do that, it is going to give even the underneath a completely finished feel. Um, so I'm going to continue that and do the other two little, you can see the other sides that aren't cleaned up under there. Um, and then I'll be able to do the so top I started coat. putting my top coat on um, and I'm just going to take just a moderate amount on my fancy new breast that I love. And I'm going to start to do kind of a nice layer. I'm um, not putting too much pressure on, but I am putting enough on that I don't really want it to... Um, I want to have like a super even layer if at all possible and that's one of the things I love this turntable for is that it makes it really easy for me to kind of move it around 
um, so that I can get a easy continuous layer. Now, one of the things I like to do that sounds funny probably, but I look kind of from the side and that gives me, when I'm looking in off the side, I, it's a, it makes it really easy, especially with the sunlight coming in the window to see if there are areas that um, either I kind of missed or if there's a drip forming. That's like the bane of my existence. I can't stand the drips. Um, I mean, I get them sometimes, but then the other thing is, then on the bottom, you're just gonna put another layer on and then you're just gonna run it across the bottom. Because it's dry, it's not gonna really cause much problem with that under layer. See how pretty it is? And we're just gonna check all the ledges, make sure that I don't have anything hanging down. But I'm gonna basically give this um, a chance to dry with this coat. I'm gonna go around, make sure I don't have any kind of creasy spots and let it dry. I'm gonna do a second one and then I may or may not put a high gloss for the third layer. The last thing I'm gonna do is the bottom and um, I will show you that. So I think I have that zoomed in where you can see it. I told you that I had saved the outside of this whole napkin because I was gonna line this bottom. And what I do is I just sit it up on something. I don't want this necessarily flat on my turntable because it's gonna get varnish on it and stick, kind of stick to it. But I've cut out a section. The corners have these flowers and that's not gonna work very easily, but this whole section will. So all I'm gonna do now, and I think this, um, I tried it on the first one and I was just really excited because I feel like it made it kind of look finished. Um, so I'm just gonna go in and the one section with the rose will come up or flower. So I'll start in the middle, kind of center it. And this is kind of easy. It's gonna give me my own little guide because there's the bottom of the, the um, napkin. And that's where I'm gonna put it so that that line kind of will come up into the middle. And then I'm just gonna flip this top up so you can see it from the top. And it's um, this is, I think, where decoupage can be so fun as you can kind of like start to get your creative and artistic side involved and um, come up with just how you like it to look. Or I wanted this again to have kind of a grounded, one thing I think with trees is that on some of them, especially like this where it has this little pedestal, I like having something like this detail on the bottom because it just gives it a little bit more um, weight on the bottom visually when you're looking at it. So this one I am gonna go straight over. I know I'm breaking my rule of normally I don't do this, which I don't, but I am right now. See how nice that looks? And when I zoom it back, you'll see um, just kind of what a finish it gives. And then the last step is gonna be just to paint the, the um, stem gold. I I showed you earlier different options and you know I kind of just eyeball what I think looks good gold. But once I do this, I think it's gonna look really pretty. I'll varnish this and maybe touch up the paint a little bit to make sure that that is really bright white. And then I'll do my gold I'm gonna step. finish how I started having a little bit more of a conversation. Not, not too much, don't worry, you're almost done. Um, but I am now just gonna take the tree trunk and put gold on it. Like I said, like on this particular one, I gilded the entire bottom. Um, some of them, well, I guess the rest of them all look like that because they're different. But anyway, this one, I've got this nice bottom to it. It looks really, really pretty. I'm really happy with it. Um, and I hope someone else will be also. And my go-to lately has been this um, Krylon Gold Leafing Pen. You do have to be careful when you're doing this because it's rounded, it's easier to have it slip and you just don't want it to hit another part. Um, another one I like is Liquid Leaf, which you can paint on. And then my favorite for shells is the um, Testers Gold Enamel, which I love. But I am gonna probably do a base coat of it with this because it's easy. Um, I like the gold that this is. You know what, it's a tiny bit tacky, but I'm just gonna show you. Basically, you're just gonna go in. Not all that tough. And get that gold down in there. And then I'm just gonna run right up to the bottom 
and but I'm gonna let the rest of this dry for a little bit before I finish that because I can feel just a little bit on my hand where I was holding it and I don't want to pull that napkin. So I hope this was helpful and that you had fun. Um, one thing I talked about when I made pumpkins was that it was always a little daunting to start um, on a larger pumpkin because I didn't want to ruin it and waste money. Um, trees were even more so because I had a limited number. So like the pumpkins, I would suggest starting on a small little tree. I got these off of Amazon and if I'm the only human that ever orders off of Amazon without paying close attention to the dimensions, um, these were not the size I expected. I thought they were a very good deal. <laughs> um, I got a big bag of them I think for like ten dollars um, but the great news is is it gave me a way to kind of practice and see uh, how a napkin would respond and what I was doing. Um, one other last tip before I finish this is on some of these trees that had a, um, a much smaller ledge, I actually, like I did for pumpkins, I did strips and I did them on my, on my paper cutter and I just went all the way straight down. The most important part there is continuing to keep that line or whatever that image is centered um, as you go down. But I hope this was fun. It's, I, I think, a really fun way to add something new for Christmas. Um, that you can make yourself, but also that you can design to look exactly the way you want it. So I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I almost on my very first video as a joke was going to say like and subscribe because it was just my personal um, video that I was helping some some ladies out with. Uh, but now that I've done three and I really like doing it, um, I really would love if you like and subscribe it and let me know if there are things that would be more helpful or that you would like to see. I'm also going to do a um, a very quick video, not this long, of some ornaments and gift tags type of things that I made that are really super easy and fun and another way to um, have a new project.